as the request of my discord they were doing shellcode conversion with donut so i have to apologize i didn't pull that often in a while but you know that's how life sometimes is so without further ado let's just dive into the fun part here am I on the repository of Donut and what Donut essentially is, is it's, a, it's a tool that is capable of generating a shellcode based on .NET assembly or portable executable. That means that if you pass a real exe file to the Donut, it's capable of actually getting that exe file and then converts it into a shellcode where you can then load it remotely or using any kind of cross injection put it in some kind of custom implant and so on and have fun with it so with that being said it has a lot of documentation of how you can build it yourself but for our purposes i like to just clone the, rep the repository so let's just do that let me see the into my desktop do git clone and paste that this is gonna clone the whole repository and after that i want to download the release file so i'm gonna download the zip one like that then i have to load that of course open that up now here copy all of this thing and now let's see the actually let's go into a donut and paste it there so why i did that i did that because I am too lazy to compile it myself and when you just download the release you have the donut exe there ready and up and running but then you may ask well why the heck you are cloning the repository i mean does it make sense and i can say yeah it does and the sense is that in this repository you have a bunch of several several bunch of smaller projects like donut test or demo create process and so on and in this demo we're going to use donut test essentially what that is is a process that demonstrates very uh, standard process injection using c sharp and this way you can actually see whether your shell code is working or not so uh let's do it now all right since now we have the donut binary up and running we must have some kind of input file so we can convert it into shellcode right yeah and in our purposes for this testing demo this input file would be mine uh, actually i did that in my very second youtube video so if you want you can go there and watch it i apologize for the bad quality at the time but you know that was what i was capable back then so uh this is the the whole code so it's divided by two parts we have the server uh, listener.py and then the client.ps1 and the client.ps1 is essentially a partial script which uses add type and adds a c sharp code inside a variable and then just executes it that way now this is nice so for our purposes we're going to use only the c sharp because obviously we want to showcase donut so i'm going to copy just the c sharp part open up a visual studio now let's uh, tweak the things a little bit and actually let's give it a, a little bit of time it's not the slowest thing in the world so let me just do where was it uh create new project and then let's do .NET framework console app yeah that's the one click next now let's give it another let's say um, implant or something all right so uh save it there the .NET framework could be that one i'm not gonna touch it so create the project and what we're going to do now is just paste my code in and just change the name the namespace to be implant the one we initially it was and with that we just need to tweak the ip a little bit now let's go to the carving machine but before that let me open up my listener.py and copy that that's pretty much our listener i'm going to explain how these things work in a nutshell let me just first set the things up so open that cd into desktop and then do vim listener.py set paste paste that and then let's do python 3 listener.py and we are good to go so let me first start with the listener.py because obviously it's a little bit of less for code so uh what we do here is we import socket so that's the only library we're gonna need from the python then we have two variables the host and the port defining that we're gonna listen on all the interfaces on port 443 with that we instantiate the new socket object we open a socket we bind to the uh, opened object and so on and while through so we enter an infinite loop we just wait for a connection 
when that connection comes, then with con with that syntax, we print the address, the connected address, then we can input the command. The command then is being sent, encoded and sent to the client. The client then is going to execute the commands and you're going to see how in a, in a while. And then on the CMD output, we just receive the command and we print it out. So that's about it. That's our C2 server and so on. Don't blame me. It's for demonstrational purposes. Now on the client, we have a little bit more code. So we have three main functions. We have get random seconds, we have connect, and we have exec. So uh, this is the main function where all the magic starts. And again, we enter into a while loop, infinite while loop. And each time we, we get loop through all this stuff, we define a variable seconds to get to, to be equal to get random seconds, which uses a new random object to generate random second between one or actually zero and uh, 10 seconds. So here we just generate a random amount of seconds, then we use the connect method. So the connect is that. What that is doing is it is instantiating a TCP uh, client and a network stream client. With these objects, we are able to connect to the Python server with this syntax and actually read the command that is being passed by the Python server. All right. After the command is being run, we instantiate, actually not instantiate, execute the function exec and pass the CMD as a parameter. And all the exec is doing is it creates, creates a new process with the cmd.exe and passes the command as slash C. I know not the most obsec way to do things, but again, demonstrational purposes. Now, with that being said, the command is executed there. Then we just encode and send the command with stream.write. And that's about it. The command is getting displayed on the backend side. We sleep for uh, that amount of seconds. So after the connect method, we sleep for that amount of seconds and then we repeat the process. So uh, let's see if that works in the first place before doing any kind of donut stuff. So let me just go to new x64. OK, close that. Now let me make sure my IP is correct. So I need to open your tab to ifconfig. Copy that. And let's move it to there. Edit that to be there and save the project. Now make sure it's released. We don't want any metadata. And I'm the guy who's talking about OPSEC now. And as you can see, is it is successfully compiled. So I'm going to open a new PowerShell window. I'm going to CD into that directory and let's try to execute it. So implant.exe, run that. Nothing happens, so no errors, which in general means fine. Then let's open up the Kali machine, go to here, and voila, we have uh, connected by a client. So we have the IP and the socket uh, port. And then we can en enter a command. So let's try with who am I? And as you can see, it's been commando LSEC. It's been, I think, encoded in uh, UTF-8. I'm not really sure. So uh, again, we can enter a command, IP config now. All right, and you get the idea, that's about it. Now, let's do a little bit more. Now, since we have the assembly we want to convert into shellcode, now we can freely use Donut. So how to use Donut? Let me just open explore that uh, to here. Let me copy that implant into my desktop and into Donut and paste it there. Now let me CD into user, salesec, desktop, donut, and there we are. So we have donut.exe. With donut.exe, this is the binary we're gonna need. So donut.exe, the minus i is the input. So we have to do minus i to be implant.exe and then minus a to be x64. I believe that's the syntax. If I'm not wrong, yeah, actually, I don't need double dots. So a x64. And that's about it. So if I run that command, if I pass the anything successfully, we can see that it generates a file called water.bin. And inside that water.bin, it sits our initial shell code for that assembly there. Now, as I mentioned, since we don't want to do any manual process injection and build that thing from scratch, that's why I cloned the donut repository, because now I can do open a solution. I can go to the desktop there and now to where is that donut? Donut test. 
and open that solution file. I have some git errors there, which I believe it's super normal, so don't have to worry about it that much. At least, that's what I believe. So, uh, let me try that. But why git? I don't want to git thing. I want to see. Yeah, that's it. So go to program.cs, and this is the project itself. Now, what I think does is it defines your shellcode as base64. The cool thing about it is it's super nice for testing your shellcodes because it generates two pair of variables. So we have actually one pair of variables, sorry. We have one variable to be for x64 and another for x32, meaning that if you compile this project into x64 or x32, different shellcodes would get executed, which is super nice for testing your shellcodes and whether they work properly. Now, if you observe the format correctly, you can see that it's actually a base64, so we would need to actually convert the water.bin file into base64 and paste it there. Beside that, how does it work? It this expects an argument which is to be which is supposed to be the PID. So when you compile the the whole file there, you you have to run that with a dot net a donut test and then just specify the PID and it's gonna inject into that specified PID. For the injection method itself, it uses the standard procedure. So open processes there. We have virtual EX and write process memory alongside with creative motivate. So nothing fancy. I always showcase some of this in my YouTube channel. So make sure to watch them in my previous videos. We're not going to dive that deep into how the code is being injected. Now let's compile that. Let's convert our shellcode into base64 compile and see whether it works or not. All right, now to convert our water.bin into a base64 string, we can use PowerShell for that. So we can define a file name to be file name to be the full path of the water.bin file. So in that case, see users, LSEC, desktop, donut, and then water.bin. If I do file name, I can get the string of itself. Now I can paste the syntax of actually converting that into base64. So in a nutshell, it's convert uh, to base64 string IO file, Vito bytes, specify the file name, and clip that so we can directly paste it from our clipboard, run it. And now let's go to there. Since we want to run that as x64, I have to edit just the first variable so I can do home. Uh, I was not meant to do that, but let's do it like that. All right paste it there and what's with that git thing there i'm not sure never mind so uh paste it there so our shell code is successfully converted into base64 and paste in the corresponding variable now it's crucial to actually change the cpu that we want to compile the project so let's go to download test new x64 all right close then to release again compile it and if everything's all right, it should be good to go. Looks like it is. So let me cd into donut test. Now cd into bin x64 release. And there we are, donut test.txt. Now I'm not really sure what's going to happen if I don't specify the PID, but let's just run it as in the intended way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to set up the very same listener.py. So we want to obviously catch the connection. Now let's go to the command VM, open process hacker2, and let's of course use the explorer.txt because why not? That's the most uh, debugging process to inject into. <laughs> so everyone does that. So the PID of explorer is 5208. So let's do download test 5208, run it. We see the output successfully injected into explorer. Now let's get back to the caddy. And voila, we have an initial callback. So we can again do who am I? We can again do, let's say, ipconfig. Come on, ipconfig. And we can see the behavior is pretty much the same. If we observe the process hacker, I believe that on the spawn a new process or checking for a new command, it should spawn a different sub process for like CMD or PowerShell or so on. But actually, I need to do who am I now and I should be fast. So run that. Yeah, I didn't see it. But in a nutshell, that's how the things really work. Now we successfully operate from the 2508 PID. 
of course you can try to run that with a different process on different pids but i cannot guarantee if it's gonna work because it has a lot of variables like the access rights of the process your access rights as a user does the process has enough memory to hold your shell code and so on so that's why explorer.txd is generally a good target for debugging purposes because you can inject a lot of shell codes inside but with that being said that's how you can use donut and that's how you can convert your own shell code out of an executable i hope the video was uh, nice for you i hope it was useful if so smash that subscribe and tap the button and i'll see you right in the next one see ya